rise. Okay, welcome back. Uh, folks, are we about ready for the jury? Mr. Preston? Yes, Mr. Preston? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Preston, I just want to put on the record to speak two seconds that I've given Mr. Hamaji uh, another 10,000 or so pages of uh, emails and all from the um, victim advocate in this case. And okay. I'm making a copy of 40 pages or so that the court reference. It's all the those pages. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And it won't take long, I promise. Um, one other thing I want to mention to the folks in the audience. Uh, I know everyone's got cell phones now, and the cell phones come equipped with cameras that are much better than anything we used to have back in the day. Please resist the temptation to be snapping pictures inside the courtroom. We have a media order that permits one uh, video camera and one still camera in the courtroom. But more importantly, the issue is sometimes when people are panning around with their cell phone, cameras are actually focusing on the jury to some extent. And that is disquieting to the jurors and it would violate the court order. Most of you haven't read it probably because it's a media order, so it would only be read by folks in the media. But I think it does pertain to everyone and to the extent that the jurors find it disquieting, I think I need to let you know that. So please resist that temptation, okay? Thank you, folks. So can you, if you bring in the jury, please? And Mr. McEnroe, if I could invite you back up here, And please be seated, folks. Thank you. Press you whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Joe, we're going to talk about what happened on December 24th, okay? Yes. Tell us now, first of all, in that last month, four weeks, you're up there at the trailer. What were you doing, doing during those four weeks? During those four weeks, we were going over it again and again, just, um, I would. I want to go off and run. I'm I, I okay. Would. I want to run. I'm like, look, if we're in this danger, let's get the hell out of here, right? She's like, no, I can't do that. I have to do this. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to let these people just push me around, and do whatever they feel like. You gotta slow down. I'm. I'm sorry. She's like, look, I'm not going to just let these people push me around and do whatever they feel like. I have to do this. But they and, weren't doing any pushing around at all at that point, right? They weren't coming down, they weren't bothering you guys, you had your own little place, right? There was no room for dissension. I mean, she literally basically stomped all doubt out, okay? She did not have any... She did not have any... Um, there was no room for any allowance of doubt. Okay, it's just, no there was no room for any allowance of doubt. It's just, this is what's going to happen. Any allowance of doubt? Yeah. 
this is just this is what's going to happen. This is what's right. I know what's going on, and you trust me, don't you? So. Did you? Trust you? Yeah, yeah, I trust her. I trust her implicit. I, I trust her implicitly. I mean, I'm sitting here trying now. I'm in a position where I'm trying to explain these things, and they don't make any sense. They didn't particularly make sense to me at the time, but I'm just like, okay, look, if you say this is right, then, then I accept that I believe you. But they don't make any sense now because they didn't make any sense then. You, you said you tried to use logical arguments to get around these things. Did you continue to do that right up until Christmas Eve? Or what happened? I only gave up on the day before Christmas Eve. What? Until then, I was trying to come up with things, and she was trying to... Eventually, I just gave up on like trying to come up with new arguments because they weren't anyone. She was just ignoring them all. She's just like, okay, this needs to happen. I have to do this. And trying everything that she could, every angle and every way of trying to convince me that this was right. And I'm just like, what happened? Even okay. a couple years earlier in your journal, you were saying, realistically, we're, neither of us are good communicators. And it seemed like you were having some doubts about whether you should be in the relationship. Wasn't this whole... Yeah. thing that she wanted to do, wasn't that giving you any more doubts about maybe you should get the heck out? By this point, I just really given up myself, actually. I, she tried to turn me into an attack dog, and so she had. She what? She tried to turn me into an attack dog. She tried, she spent all this time going stripping away my personality, and so it walked. Spent all this time? Stripping away my personality, replacing with one she, that worked better for what she wanted. So, there you go. And so when it came down to it, just don't ask questions, just do what I say. So but the, you said you, you didn't, I think you said, and I'm not trying to mischaracterize it, but I'm paraphrasing you, I think you said you didn't give up until the day before? That was, the fun, that was when I'm just like, okay, I just gave up at that point. I was trying, you know, I was trying to come up with some way until then I just couldn't, okay? And then it's just like, then I guess she's trying. Was there any one thing she said that, that put you over the, the edge, as it were? I finally just kind of gave in uh, with her pointing out that, with one of her um, things pointing out how like abusive Wayne was for, in this particular one, saying that Wayne had just went off like beat this dog with a shell for like three hours or something, and just like, okay then. And that wasn't anything worse or better than anything that she said before it's just realistically I guess it's more of just I haven't come up with anything else. Well did you continue trying to talk to Crow or use any of these other defense mechanisms you had developed? No. No, by then I just gave up. But you continued to function, right? You say you gave up, but at some point you you loaded the guns, right? I had to protect all. The best way to protect her was to go off and make sure that she was ca I had to protect her, and it's to make sure that she would be safe. If that involved loading the guns, then yes, I loaded the guns. If that involved going with her, then yes, I went with her. If that involved doing these horrible things, yes, I did that too. That doesn't mean it was right. That means that that's what I thought had to happen, and... So I'm walking off of the fact that I believe, not off of the fact of reality. You what, Joe? I was walking off of what she would, off of the reality she was selling me, not off of any real reality. And it's just like, when I didn't want this to happen. I wanted to, I wanted to go, but she's like, no, I have to do this. When did you realize that wasn't the real reality? As we're driving off and everybody's dead. After everybody died, I'm just like, look, this did not have to happen. Do you realize this was so completely unnecessary? And she's like, yeah, I should have listened to you. You were right. It's like, you were wise, and I was in something or another. I don't remember what she said after that. But it's just like, now you figure it out? Well, let's go back, Joe. Well, the day before Christmas, you say you've given up. Now, what exactly went into going up there? Tell this jury they have the right to hear what exactly. <sighs> yeah. So that day, I'd, um, I ended up staying up the day but have to speak up? I know, I know. Even the day before, I'd end up uh, staying up hoping that I'd just like oversleep, right? And then we wouldn't wake up in time for this to happen. It didn't work, actually, so... Um, and again, no thoughts of calling in the police or 
sneaking out in the night and knocking on Judy and Wayne's door? No, no, none of that. Um, it. I'm not even going to pretend that that. That's certainly something along the lines of what I should have done, or like hitting the gun or some damn thing, something. But I went with it, because I feel she was probably right. She probably knew what she was talking about, so I went with it. But I didn't, so she, um... Just keep your voice up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she, uh, calls up the hour and asks, hey, is... Hold, hold on. Christmas Eve morning, you wake up, what happens? It's around, uh... 12 thought or something actually so I wake up she goes and uh, makes a call to she makes a call to I think it was Judy asks if Scott's there or not um, now was it known to you guys that Scott and Erica were coming with their kids yeah what's that yeah and what discussion had you had about the kids in advance the discussion is that they were already corrupted that the only that what they've gone through if they want corrupt already they would be by this and so the only decent thing to do would be, would be what? the if they weren't already corrupted already then they would be by this so the only decent thing to do would be to free them so that they won't have to live through this torturous existence now when you say free them you mean kill them is that right Joe? yeah kill them so that they could be so that they could be reborn and get in a better life Joe you told Detective Pavlovich kids were killed so they wouldn't turn you in. Was there a discussion with Michelle about witnesses, getting rid of witnesses, that sort of thing? I don't recall. Is it possible to do that? I don't recall. Is it possible that that discussion took place? It is. I just don't recall if it did. Now would be a pretty important time to recall all the details, I would say. Yes, I know. Um, no, I don't remember being fra being framed in the uh, way of making sure that there weren't any, that there weren't, there might have been, but I don't, I'm not, I don't think that um, it was framed in the context of making sure there weren't any any witnesses, I, the only context I recall it being the la, Nathan and Olivia being put in was to make sure that they didn't, that they wouldn't have a faith that was worse than death, right? That they wouldn't what? Have a faith that was worse than death, right? Well, That's the only context I recall that, that in. And um, there might have been it with the others. I remember actually being like, look, you know, are you, you really think these guys are just going to disappear and not be noticed? And she's like, look, don't worry, I've got it under control. I know what I'm doing. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's this about disappearing and not being noticed? What are you talking about? If they all want to die and not show up, I mean, do you really think nobody's going to notice that these people aren't? coming home, you really think that these, that nobody's going to know, that, th like, like, Nathan doesn't have any friends, you think that, like, people don't, that Olivia doesn't have any little playmates, that, that Scott doesn't have the people who he works with, I mean, he was the head of, he was the, uh, the foreman at pretty, building this underground reservoir. These, does not people who notice this? So was there some discussion suggesting that people just wouldn't notice if the Andersons, all six of them, yeah, actually, I, so I'm like, look, is this realistic, you know? And she's just like, look, don't worry about it. I've got a cover. You trust me, don't you? Well, but it doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, Judy's not going to be noticed at the post office. And this I know it doesn't make any sense, but she made it so that, look, there was no room for dissension. There was no room for questioning. Was, I there, was there any discussion of maybe there's something we could do with the kids that doesn't involve killing them? Alternatives come up? I tried to come up with some. I couldn't. I I tried. I probably should have tried harder. I don't I don't know how I would have tried harder, but I should have. Okay, so Christmas morning, Christmas Eve morning, it's twelve thirty. 
afternoon. You get up. Get up. Well, she's making a phone calls. I'm going off and getting ready to die. So. Why think you were going to die? Why wouldn't I die? Everybody else is. If everybody else is going to die, why would it? Why would? Why should I be the one who survives? I was not planning on surviving that. Was there a suicide pact or something? No, I just was not planning on. On some level, I felt that I would not survive that, and I was not planning on surviving it. So what did you do to prepare? Just um, basically what they would do in laying out a body, go off like, um, you know, new clothes, clean clothes, shower, shave, all that stuff. More, more than I would usually do, just going up there and like visiting them. So. Um, okay, so. Going more of mental preparation for that, I guess. I don't know. Mental preparation for what? Dying. So how did you think? I mean, how did you think this was practically going to play out? I didn't. I didn't have any idea how it would play out. She's like, "Look, I know I've got a plan." She's like, "Look, don't worry about it. I've got all in control. Just don't worry about it. Just follow my follow my lead, kind of thing." Well, but was there some discussion of who's going to kill who, or no. which who's you're going to kill? No. Or... Hold, hold on. Sorry. Did you think? You'd have to do some shooting that day. I mean, you were armed. Look, I was only armed as a backup. I didn't think we'd be going through more than, you know, six bullets. I thought that she had a clip that had 15 rounds. I thought that that would be more than enough. I was only there to go off and make sure that she was safe. I was not there to kill anybody. In fact, that was against. I'm not, she's like, look, you don't have to kill anybody. I'm like, okay, good, because I don't want to kill anybody. Okay. But Joe, I mean. You're going up there. She's got 15 bullets. You've got six, right? And several extra in my pockets, yeah. And several extra in your pockets. I mean, if you're going up there as backup, <coughs> or even as as, a, as protection, I mean, take that to the next logical step. You're not going to be protecting her against yeah. anything or anybody other than other humans, right? Yeah. And other humans that, that she's literally firing on. I'm no. Sure and other humans that she's literally firing on. So there's that, and no, I didn't think about that. I was trying not to think about that. Did you have some idea that that could happen? I had some concern that that might happen. Speak up. I had some concern that that might happen, yes. Did you voice that with her? No. No, I don't think I did. So, you, so would you load the guns that day or previous day? That day. Okay. Actually, the... Uh, the 9 millimeters clip had been loaded for quite a while. That's probably why it jammed when it did. The 9 millimeters clip had been uh, loaded for a while. That's probably why it jammed when it did, because if you have a okay. gun... That's enough, thanks. We don't need to... Probably okay. Because it had been loaded for a while, that's your Yeah, it okay. wells out the spring. What was that? It wells out the spring. Wears out the spring. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. so you go up there? What, what time did you go up there? What was surrounding, what was happening as you went up there? So she establishes that it's got to be coming whenever I go and get ready, and that involves um, chambering around for home. Okay. It involves, I'm sorry, can I do it? Chambering around for home. You chambered around for Michelle? Yes. Okay. And so... We went up there, had a uh, had a box that had some just random junk in it. I was carrying that box. I did actually. What was what was the box for? It was a decoy. A because, decoy? Yes, because she was up there. They were up there wrapping presents. It's like, okay, well, can we? Someone shows like, can we come up there and wrap presents too? I was like, okay, sure. So, we went up there, and. Um, Put the box in. I carried the box in there. Put it in the uh, in the side room. I was out with. Okay, I'm stop you for one second and just uh, may we pull up uh, Ms. Morales the diagram, just the floor plan of the of the whole interior of the house. This, um, States Exhibit 13. Joe, uh, what room was this that you put 
this, this president is in, um, in the hallway? Um, it's the first bedroom on the left. Okay, so the one that's called craft room up there? I think so. Do you have a little vision problem, Joe? Yes, I do, actually. Just nearsightedness? Yes. There's a recliner. He there's a couch right beside the recliner, right? And he's sitting between he's sitting on those there's that gap between the cushions at uh, the between the middle and the right cushions. So That's about where he was sitting. So he's sitting on that, that three cushion couch. Mm -hmm. I know the diagram shows that the love seat has three also. But, yeah. Um, so this is the one that faces north, faces the, the front windows, faces, yes. faces the blanket rack? Yeah. Okay. And what, how long did you sit there with Wayne? I think it must have been about half an hour or so. So, and again, what's, and then you come up there, right? Yeah. To kill these people. Why, why, what's the wait? Why wait? Because... I mean, I didn't particularly want to kill these people, for one, and I don't know what it was on Michelle's phone. I went over to Michelle, so Wayne's like, Wayne said that, um, after a uh, time, Wayne said, but so... Let me interrupt you for one second before we get to that. You're sitting with Wayne for approximately a half hour, Yes. Right? What are you guys doing? Just watching TV, talking. Talking. Everything pleasant? Was there an argument going on? No. No? Everything was fine. Was he abusive to you or anything? No. And where is Michelle at this point? She's in the kitchen with Judy and, you know, it's one of those things where at this point I should have really been, it should have really been obvious that, you know, maybe, maybe we're not in the danger that I think we're in. But no, so Michelle, I didn't recognize that. Where? What's that? Your gun is where at this point? My gun is literally on my left side. Were you, was it in the open or did you have a jacket on? I had a jacket over it. So Wayne couldn't see it? Yes. He it, it, no, he couldn't see it. Flashing guns around is kind of rude. What was that? Never mind. No, I need to hear. You have to Flashing guns around is kind of rude. Sorry, I wasn't. Joe. That's why I said never mind. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I. Where was Michelle? It's automatic. Sorry. Where was Michelle? Um. Michelle was in the kitchen. Oh, Michelle's gun was uh, on the counter in the kitchen. Well, how, was it just sitting open, or what was she? How did she have it? Um, it was wrapped in something? It was wrapped in her, uh, it was wrapped in her, um, sweatshirt. And, by the way, I wasn't trying to make a joke, though. I was just saying. Anyway. What was Michelle doing in the kitchen? She was making a green bean casserole, actually, and helping her mom. I didn't hear she was making. A green bean casserole and helping her mom. With and again, I whatever. I ask, why make a green bean casserole if y'all are getting ready to kill everybody? I can't answer that. She's making the green bean casserole. Did you observe her doing that? Yeah. And she's got, she just put the gun on the counter? No, she had it wrapped up in her sweatshirt. But then that was put on the counter? Yes. Okay. And then what happened? You're in there with Wayne talking, and at a certain point, what did he say? Wayne mentions, uh, hey, you guys might want to move the truck because uh, Scott's going to be coming up soon. You guys? Might want to move the truck because Scott is going to be coming up soon. Does this have to do with that roundabout driveway? In the yes. Truck? Okay. So... Uh, what happened next? So, um, I went over to Michelle and, uh, got off the side of the site over at, um, the entrance to the kitchen from the, uh, front hall. The entrance to the kitchen from the front hall? Yeah. So I'm, and um, just going to point out in case it's been a couple of months since we were here, but, um, we're roughly in this vicinity right here? Yes. Okay. Right at the tip of your pen. You got to speak up, Joe. Yes, right at the tip of your pen. And so I'm like, look, you know, if we're going to be moving the truck, I can't remember exactly how you put it. I can't remember. I, I know. If we're, I, 
can't remember exactly how you put this. I think it was something along the lines of, um, look, uh, if we're going to be moving the truck, you know, if you're going to do this, do this. If not, let's just go. If you're going to do this, then do this. If not, then let's just go. So is that the only thing you said to her, or did you say something to her about the truck? I believe I said something about moving the truck fast. What, to the best of your recollection, did you say? Look, while we're moving the truck, you know, since we're going to be moving the truck, if you want to, if you're going to do this, then let's do this. If not, then let's just go. I think that's what I said. I'm not sure about that false sentence, but I know about the second sentence. I was trying to say it's like I was trying to give her an out. She took it as me, you know, kind of prodding her on. But you're trying to give her an out? If you're going to do this, let's do this? Was that your idea of an out? No. If not, let's go. It was. Okay. So then what happened next? Did you say anything else to her? So she's like, no, I'm going to do this. So... I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm going, I'm going to do this. So... I was like... And at which point I'm like, shit. Um... My, she said that she was going to do this, and I'm just like, well, that went well. Um, but, so, but again, why, I just, you've got a point here. No bullets have been fired, right? Right? Yeah. Front I, is right there. Exactly. We could we could have walked away, and she's like, no, we're already acting weird. They are they are right, they're probably already suspicious. We can't just walk away now. They're going to be they're going to like get all freaked out, and something will happen if we do. She just felt that we were acting weird and that us leaving then would be weird. Okay, so then what happened next? So then I went over into the other room with Judy because um, at some point me and Judy had started, um, at some point between that, between me, between us entering and that particular conversation, between us entering and that particular conversation, I went back with Judy and uh, we were rapping. I was um, standing there while she was wrapping presents. Was this in the craft room? In the craft room, yes. She was talking. That's right. I wasn't watching. I watched some TV with Wayne, but then I went back with uh, Judy to, to help her wrap presents. One of her, um, her uh, mother's boyfriend had died recently. In fact, I think that day. And I was trying to tell her, it's like, look, don't worry. Sometimes these things happen and that I'm trying to... Uh, Put her at ease so when she um, trying to put her at ease so that if this did go the way that it was going to go, that it did go that when she died that she wouldn't be that she wouldn't have that unconscious and have that holding hole so that she wasn't able to like move on with whatever. So what happened next? You're talking to Judy in the craft so room. So I'm talking to Judy in the craft room and she was one of the bad stuff stunts because this is the point where I hear a, uh, I hear a shot in the other room, and the aunt, I hear a shot from the living room, and I hear a. Uh, so after I had talked with Michelle, it actually went back to uh, talking with Judy, right? And so I hear the shot in the uh, living room, and I hear a, what the hell? I come out, and Judy. Before I even come out, Judy's like, "What was that?" And then we hear, "What the hell?" And speak up, Joe. Yeah. And I come out behind Judy. I see Wayne standing here like this, looking over. Michelle was off to his side. Now, hold on a second. Was off behind. Wayne is. is I'm wondering if the laser beam you can't see anymore. Wayne is standing where? He's still in the living room, or is he moved? He's exactly exactly where I told you he was only on. So on the still sitting on the couch? Still sitting on the couch. And he's got a hand on his head? On the back of his head, and Michelle is standing behind him. Michelle on the other side of the couch. The back of the couch. Michelle was standing at the back of the couch. Okay. Right uh, behind the um, the middle divide. The right, right behind the middle cushion. Okay. And she's got the nine millimeter? And she's got it out. And right, what, and, and she's got so he's he turns around and, and he's like, "What the hell?" And he sees her standing there with the gun, and it's like, "Damn!" It just as a note, I think that's where the uh, bullet that went through the towel rack came from. Okay. Through the blanket rack. Yeah, that thing, towel rack, blanket rack, whatever. So I'm like, "Shit!" So I 
Yeah. So I run. So I move quickly forward into the um, down the hall and into into the uh, no, I'm ready down the hall into the kitchen, and she comes around from the other end of the kitchen. So wait a second. So you moved. Joe, you're coming to, you and Judy, you're both coming to the craft room, right? Yes. And you said you move forward. What is forward? Is this from right to left? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you went into the kitchen, is that right? Yes. Now, you can go into the kitchen through the dining room or through this entrance? I went in through the uh, right entrance. Through the hallway there? Yes. Okay. And where, where was Wayne at this point? Wayne was uh, starting to come up from, he had, uh, he was starting to come from the couch. Mm -hmm. I went through the uh, I went through the the kitchen, and once I got to once I got to the end of the kitchen, she was stand Michelle was standing at the um, at the other at the uh, other end of the kitchen. Is that which end? Near the dining room or near the, the refrigerator? The no, I was standing by the refrigerator. She was standing over by the um, over by the dining room end of the kitchen. She so, standing by the dining room entrance to the kitchen. Yes. In fact, she was standing uh, in the dining room still. So, so she was standing in the dining room still. And Judy is where at this point? In front of you or behind you? I think she's in front of me. Yeah, she's in front of me at this point. So she's between you and Michelle. Yeah. So I rush <laughs> forward. Oh, um, Michelle steps into the steps into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I step out of the kitchen step into the dining room. At this point, Wayne is uh, charging, right? In fact, let me get the sequence right. By the time I get to the uh, to where Michelle's standing, Wayne's charging. He's gotten around the, uh, he's gotten out of the living room and he's coming down the dining room. Now, I, now wait a second. Charging to who? Michelle. She had taken a shot at him, right? Yes. Okay. So, it, hopefully, at that point? no. What no. Next? So I pulled. So I see him charging at all. I pull my gun and I fire. Right. At this point, he's near. Um, he's actually right beside the uh, far end of the table, and right, I'm. Hold on. Right beside the far end of the table. The north end. The, the north end of the dining room table or the south end. The north end of the table. Okay. I'm at the uh, south corner of the table, basically. Okay. And what happened? You, uh, do you recall what was going through your head? As you pulled the trigger and shot the gun at Wayne? Nothing. Just no. nothing. No, there was just... I... Later on we should talk about distance, but at this point I had this... Just this distance between what's going on and... It's like I was just watching what was happening. Okay, so tell us what happened next. You shoot at Wayne... So, I happened? shoot at him. He mm -hmm. fly... He... Because he was running, he uh, flies to the side and knocks into the table, and the chair was sending them um, falling, sprawling, whatever. Some of the dining room chairs? Yeah. He falls down. On, he lands on the ground. His head is right by um, where the corner of the thing is. So, wait a the when south. Hey, Joe. When you shot him, did you hit him? Did you think you hit him? Yes. I thought I had. Why? Because he fell. Okay. And then what happened next? So he's on the ground now and I killed him. What did you do? I shot him in the head. So Joe, when you shot Wayne, Michelle's gun is jammed, right? Yes. She actually was holding it up, jammed, and it's like, okay. she's so, staying like. Did you think he had been hit by her bullet? I thought, it took me long, it wasn't until so this. Asking you what, if you remember, what you thought at the time. I had no idea. Okay. Because, I mean, he was holding the back of his head. I didn't know if the gun had even fired. I was wondering if the, if the pull it at just like halfway ejected or if it didn't fire or what. Were you, was that going through your head at the time? No. All that was going through my head at the time is that she's in danger. I have to protect her. So but what we know from the, from the
from Dr. Harris' testimony is that Wayne was shot only one time, right? Yes. So when you shot him and Michelle's gun was jammed, how many people had been shot that day before that? He was the false positive doctor. So after you shot Wayne, what happened next? After I shot Wayne, I turned immediately to my right, and there was Judy, and I fired on her. I turned immediately to my right, and there was Judy. She, w she flinched. She was right over by the sink, and I, w and I was still in that passage way right there. Let me stop you for a second. I think Mr. O'Toole had heard you. You said I turned on Judy. Did you say I fired on her? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I did. And so she was still, you said, in the passage? No, I was still in the passage. Which passage? You were still near the dining room? I'm still in the dining room. I'm okay. still, like, right on that threshold between the dining room and the kitchen. And where was Judy? She was right beside the sink. By the sink? Yes. And um, did that go on the <clears throat> I do not know. Did she go down? I had... I, th I only remember actually firing once. Apparently I fired twice. The second one hit her and uh, sent her collapsing beside the... Um, the fridge, collapsing in front of the fridge. I remember the last thing she said was, "Oh no!" And then what happened? And then she wasn't moving anymore, and so I went over by where she was, and I told her that I was sorry, and I shot her in the head. The way that you saw her when in the autopsy pictures was not the way that I had left her. The way that you had seen her in the autopsy pictures was she, the, the look on her face was not how I had left her. Well, you left her dead, sir. I'm saying that her expression changed. She did not, she did not have that expression when I killed her. Okay, Okay. So. Pretty sorry. So, I told him, Michelle, I'm like, okay, what now? Okay, so it's like, this is your idea, you, your plan, but, but what now? In fact, I think I had to go and, like, find her again because she had, like, wa wandered off somewhere. I'm like, Michelle, Michelle, you know, so she comes back and it's like, what am I supposed to do now? What am I, you know? And so I'm like, look, how about... And she's just no help at all. She's just running around. And so I'm end up having to go and like so I'm like, okay, so what do we what do we do? Okay, we need to get rid of this. We can't just leave this here. Why can't we just leave it? Because we can't just leave it though. Is it to go off like beta trap? No, it's because we can't just leave it though. Is it my we, can, we can't we can, is it to beta trap? No, it's because we can't just leave these dead people here, okay? So I moved it. So I went and um, moved Judy first. I put a bag over her head because I couldn't look at her because of see the emptiness. Well, the, she should be. <laughs> so, So I moved her out the back door, and it's Get yourself a tissue, take a because she was empty now. Joe, we're going to keep telling this jury Yes. what happened. Okay. So, it's... You're going to have to 
Yeah. You're going to have to pick your head up. Okay. I can do that. Yes. Okay. Why not a At this point, it's... I don't know. I've completely given up at this point. Yes, and at this point, if nothing else, something should have happened. At this point, if nothing else, I should have done something, but I did. At this point, if nothing else, I should if not so, if not at any point prior, I should have done something, but I didn't. Instead, I just <sighs> accept that it was out of my hands, and that I had to protect Michelle. That's all I was focused on at that point was protecting Michelle. This didn't kind of wake you up like a splash of cold water. I'm literally like, look, I can't do this again. I can't believe I just did this. What, what in the hell? She's like, just, this is, this has, for all the running around stuff she was doing, she's still like, no, this is, this has to happen. This is still right. And I'm like, well, don't ask me to go off and kill anybody else because I'm not going to. And she's like, oh, right, no problem. You know, I, I don't want you to. I'm, I'm only supposed to be killing everybody. And I didn't want you to. I'm only supposed to be killing everybody. And, Joe? Yes. That conversation happened before or after you moved Lee and Judy's club? After. That's after I moved everything. Okay, so I want you to tell us the details. You moved Judy's body. Okay. Shed, right? Yeah. So I, asked, so I asked Michelle, it's like, okay, well, well, what, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay, wh where am I supposed to put Judy? Okay. And she's like, put her in the shed. I'm like, Okay, so I t uh, took her out back. I took her out the back door and I took her down to the stairs and I'm like, hey, you know, would you come back here again? Because she's run off again. She because she's run off again. So I'm like, here, give, give me a hand with this, right? So I didn't want to have to like drag her through the, over the lawn. So I picked her up. So we both picked her up and carried her and put her in the, in the shed and then went back and as soon as she was put down, she was gone again. So I went back and uh, tried. So went. So I went back and tried to move, move uh, Wayne, and that was really difficult. He was, he was a robust man. Um, so, he was a robust man. And so, I had to use the um, use the culprits that he had that were in that room that he had fallen on to kind of help with moving him. And as I'm taking him out the, uh, out the side passage, my, uh, the weight and everything end up going like have, making my foot go through the, um, the transom, whatever, I guess it's called, the, the door frame. Well, you saw the, uh, in, in, in the picture. And so I get him, I'm having the uh, hardest time, just like, this guy is so heavy. And I keep on trying to get Shell over to like help me with this, and it's just, you know, it just, just keeps running off. So I get him out, so I get him out the back, and I'm like, hey, look, can you give me a hand with this? And she, and I eventually get her to come out and give me a hand, try and take him over to the, the shed. And we're trying to pick him up, and his short. Keep in mind, this entire time I've not touched either of their skin. Um, I try to. I, I haven't touched either of their skins. I was trying to. I was moving him by uh, holding on to his short. I think. No, I was. I was pulling him along by his uh, legs, actually, his ankles, and then by the time we started getting by the. By the shed, his uh, pants started slipping and coming off, and it's like, oh, this is just ghastly. Uh, just and so now I'm 
dragging his long half neck. So we're trying to bring him into the shed and it's just, it's not walking. And I'm trying to like get him under his, under his armpits and it's just, I can't, it's just too heavy. She's on the inside and I'm on the outside. And we're trying to pick him up and put him in, put him in the shed and we just can't because it, he's just, I can't. It's just too much and so we're just like, okay, well, we'll just have to leave him here then I guess. I just have to leave him here then, I guess, so I cover him up as best as I can so the dogs don't eat at him, and so nothing else does either, so that it's not obvious that there's a dead man out there. So I go back inside, and I'm like, okay, well, what about all this blood, and she's gone again. I'm like, Okay, what am I supposed to do here? And she's like, well, use the towels. I'm like, okay, so I use all the towels, and then there's still all this blood all over the place. She's like, use the towel. I'm like, what am I supposed to go off and like, put this? And she's like, put it in the lot, put it in the washroom. And the washroom, Judy had been running the washroom all the Judy had been running the washroom all the way, so that the so it was already a finished load of towels in there. So I put them in there too, and then. Um, then we have that conversation we had talked about earlier where I'm like, okay, look, I can't do this again. And she's, I can't believe that I did this. What, what the hell? She's like, I'm, well, I still have to keep, keep going this. And I'm like, maybe Scott won't come. And she's like, oh, yes, he'll come. He'll, he better come. You know? So. Yeah, let me ask you something. Yeah. Mr. I think it was um, Mr. Hamburg. Chris Hamburg from the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab had referred to an area that was in the vicinity of the um, cabinet on the edge of the dining room. Yes. There was an area where he said it looks like there wasn't any blood here. He called it the boy. Remember that? That was a culprit, though. Well, there might have been where his foot was. I, I don't. I didn't hear you. There was a culprit there, and there might have been where Wayne's foot was. It would have been about that area. Well, I wanted to ask you about. I thought it was a little bit coincidental that he was calling it the boy. So did I. So why did you think that was coincidental? Because at that, as we were going through that uh, exhibit, not just his part, but later on the, um, uh, the, the, I haven't talked about Void yet, have I? Talk about Void right now. Okay. So. After this, Speak into the as this is all going on, I'm feeling as like my mind is breaking as this is all going on, okay? As you're shooting Wayne and Judy? Yeah, as everybody's dying, as all of this is terrible event is occurring, as everybody's dying, my mind is breaking more and more. Part of it is because part of me doesn't want anything to do with me, part of it is. I'm, there's this huge gulf between what's going on in, around me and where I'm at. What does that mean? It feels like watching somebody else, it felt like it was somebody else doing some of these things and sometimes not. And found out later on that Freud had, just a part of my uh, consciousness had split off later on and I was actually able to talk with him. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Void, it turns out later on that Void, sorry, who was part of my, that had been part of my consciousness earlier had kind of split off and... Joe, can you use the microphone? Right. It turns out that what? That Void who that part of my consciousness had kind of split off at that, which sounds completely absurd. I know, I just, I don't know, just, just it was like there was somebody else, okay? It was like I could have a complete conversation with somebody else, and he was another, but it was just, it was like talking with.